Experts are saying that it is the end of the Industrial Revolution. It's the end of the first Industrial Revolution, really, says engineering manager Nigel Bates. He first stepped onto the site more than 40 years ago. Well, now it's closing down. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And we're charting the history of the end of fossil fuels. Now, yes, we need some level of fossil fuels to manufacture things like plastics, but we do not need even 80% of the fossil fuels we currently consume. But it is the beginning of the end for fossil fuels. And even though the media would like to tell you otherwise, we are heading down that track. Over the past 12 months, many different coal power stations have shut down. The media doesn't talk about this because fossil fuels, they don't want to promote this stuff. But the UK's final coal-fired power station has just shut down. Yet another one added to the rest. At Ratcliffe on Saw in Nottinghamshire, the turbines will stop spinning for good this year as the UK meets its pledge to ban coal use. From the northernmost reaches of the River Saw in Nottinghamshire, the towers of Britain's last coal-fired power station emerge from the flat countryside like concrete monuments to another time. Gillian Ambrose says for The Guardian that for more than half a century, Ratcliffe on Saw has burned millions of tonnes of coal to generate the electricity needed to power the British economy. But only, but one by one, Britain's coal power stations have shut down, leaving Ratcliffe the sole survivor. In less than six months, it too will finally power down for good, extinguishing the last embers of the once mighty coal industry. With its last winter behind it, the sprawling site, which covers the same acreage as the City of London, is quiet, save for the hum of a single turbine and the crackle of electricity power lines overhead. Soon, it will be replaced with renewable energy, including solar and wind, but also nuclear. This site once employed up to 3,000 people, but now only 350 engineers are working there in shifts. As Ratcliffe ekes out its final months, unsure of just how many hours the site even has left to run before it closes at the end of September. At its peak in the 1920s, the UK coal industry employed almost 1.2 million people. As you can see from this chart, um, well, most of those jobs are gone. Nearly all of them, in fact. Last Saturday night was my last shift, said Ian Jackson, a shift leader at the site. I've worked night shifts for the past 30 years. In that time, I've become a father and a grandfather. My family has only ever known me as a shift worker. Now, I should point out, recent research has said that in the United States, more than 10 million people have died prematurely as a result of coal pollution, which has spread from these coal power stations. It filters through the air. And if you live within a 100 kilometer radius or about a 60 mile radius, you breathe in those toxic fumes. And that leads to things like premature cancer. So I, for one, am glad to see this site go. However, when Ratcliffe was opened in 1968 by the Central Electricity Generating Board, the very first series of Dad's Army was about to be broadcast. The Beatles were topping the charts and coal power was the thing. Everyone thought it was good. Everyone thought that, um, well, coal is great. No problems with coal. Coal-fired stations mushroomed through Britain's mining heartlands in the 1960s and 70s to provide baseload power for Britain's electricity network. The 2000 megawatt Ratcliffe broke up the skyline for drivers on the new M1 motorway and provided power to heat and light 2 million homes. It was built in an area rich in coal where collieries employing tens of thousands of miners dotted the landscape. By the early 1980s, Ratcliffe was burning 65% of South Nottinghamshire's coal output. The new power stations were built fast. At the time, their scale and engineering complexity was unprecedented, and their impact on the climate, well, no one knew. It was unforeseen. 
When Ratcliffe generates its last megawatts this year, it will represent the final dismantling of Britain's coal heritage and end almost 150 years of coal-powered economic growth. It's the end of the first industrial revolution, really, said engineering manager Nigel Bates. Coal started it all and we're going to end it, he says. For many, the closure of Britain's last coal plant cannot come soon enough. Coal power is considered an environmental disaster, threatening the globe with climate catastrophe. Experts believe the world needs to close coal power plants at almost five times the present rate and to stop building new ones to meet Paris Climate Agreement goals. Britain has sought to lead the way internationally. In 2016, ministers set out a plan to ban coal power from the UK by 2025. And they brought the deadline forward by a year in 2021 as the government prepared to host the COP26 climate talks in Glasgow. The time is right, realistically, Bates said. We need to do our bit for the planet, and this place is well past its sell-by date. It was built to run for 25 to 30 years, and 57 years later, we're still here. It's still spitting out pollution. Coal-fired power plants generated four-fifths of the UK's power for decades until the North Sea boom saw a dash for gas-fired plants through the 1990s. Over the past decade, coal power has been relegated to the margins of Britain's power system by costly carbon taxes and the rise of cheap renewable energy. Some plants, such as Drax in North Yorkshire, adapted to replace coal with wood pellets, but most were forced to close calling time on an industry created in 1882 when the Edison Electric Light Station in Holborn, London, became the world's first plant to generate electricity for public use. For a time, coal plants like Ratcliffe made up the backbone of the energy system, said Peter O'Grady, Ratcliffe's site manager. Latterly, I guess, we have been the scaffolding that the energy system has leaned on to enable renewables to play a much bigger part. Coal was responsible for just 1% of the power generated in the UK last year and was called on to increase its output only as a very last resort. Whether coal has provided 80% of Britain's power or nearly zero, we've been here to keep the lights on, says O'Grady. It has been estimated that at Britain's coal generating peak, there was as many as 250 cooling towers up and down the country. Today, only 50 remain, with between 5 and 10 demolished every year. By the end of this decade, Ratcliffe's towers will be gone too. Each east of the boiler house, Ratcliffe's near empty coal yard stands as a reminder that the site's operational life is running low. The yard has taken more than 140,000 deliveries of coal since the late 1960s, originally from the collieries that mined Britain's rich seams of coal. At its peak in the early 1980s, Ratcliffe would burn as much as 6.5 million tonnes of coal in a single year. Over the past winter, it needed not less than 960,000 tonnes, and that was imported from South Africa and Australia. For Chris Kitchen, General Secretary of the National Union of Mine Workers, the closing of Ratcliffe marks the end of an industrial decline which has its roots four decades ago in the miners' strikes of 1984 to 85. At the time, Ratcliffe was close to the centre of the bitter internal battle that brought the NUM to its knees, the miners' union. Some Nottinghamshire miners opposed the union bosses and the way strikes were called. This led to the formation of the Breakaway Union of Democratic Mine Workers in 1985, as Margaret Thatcher's government brought the industry to heel. It was a very strange time, recalls Richard Montgomery, who has worked as a mechanical engineer at Ratcliffe for the past 43 years. We had all been brought up in an era of unions. So we felt that this loyalty to the union, we also felt strongly we needed to keep the lights on. It was very difficult to cross the picket lines as a young man back then. In the intervening 40 years, the pits have closed and communities, well, some of them have struggled. The NUM's membership has tumbled from 170,000 in 1981 to just 82 people today, echoing the collapse in mining and power station jobs. 
and possibly echoing the collapse in automotive industries in places like Japan and the United States. Now that hasn't happened yet, but it certainly could. British mining has been in decline for many years before Thatcher's decision to shutter its older collieries. But the economic scars of the abrupt closures reverberate in today's climate agenda through the calls for a just transition to protect communities built on fossil fuels. Kitchen fears that while Britain is certainly greener, it has lost something in the process. We have lost jobs to other countries, as well as our energy security and the ability to control our own costs. The coal industry never made profits, you know. It was about the national good. I'm not a dinosaur who wants to exist in the dark ages. We do need to address climate change, but let's do it without the blinkers on. Now, I think a lot of these people don't realize the very damaging effects of burning coal. And they believe it's just about climate change, but it's certainly not. The air quality is drastically improved once coal mines shut down and also once coal power stations shut down. About half of Ratcliffe's current workforce will remain on the site until 2025 to decommission it before the demolition begins. It will be a complicated process. The plant is tucked into a triangle formed by the main railway line to London and the A453 linking Nottingham to the M1. It is an inconvenient location for a controlled implosion of eight giant concrete towers. So yeah, if you wanna see some controlled explosions, this is the place to go. In the coming months, Ratcliffe is expected to set out plans for its green legacy. Its owner, the German energy giant Uniper, has already set out plans to produce green hydrogen at the site by the turn of the decade. According to Ruth Edwards, the conservative MP for nearby Rushcliffe, it is a transformation that will bring jobs and investment to the whole East Midlands region. The closure of Ratcliffe on Saw, the last coal-fired power station in the UK, is a big moment. Its closure is a time to recognise the huge contribution the power station has made and to celebrate the progress the UK has made in decarbonising its energy supply, he said. The future of the site as a green energy hub is incredibly exciting. But many who have grown up with the towers as a fixture on the Nottingham Shear skyline have mixed feelings. They're gutted, they say. I'm going to miss those towers. I'm going to miss that pollution. I got used to it. Well, change is something that humans often struggle to deal with. And change is happening at the fastest pace in human history. Coal power stations are closing all over the world. This is one of many. They're closing here in Australia. They're closing here right where I live in Newcastle. A lot of people struggling to deal with this. They feel like, well, coal is something I know. I understand it. It's always been here since I was born. Well, that, my friends, is changing. It's being replaced very, very quickly with solar, wind, and batteries. And even though change is difficult, change in this case is certainly for the better.